is my pleasure to introduce you to co-founder and CTO of Salesforce, Mr. Woo. Parker Harris. All right, Mike. Woo. Woo. All right. Welcome, admins. Welcome, admins. Wow. I got to say, it is awesome to be back here. Last year, I missed this keynote. Mwah. I'm so sorry. I had to be out of town, believe it or not. But this year, I'm back. Two years ago, it rocked. And I think this year is going to be even better, right? Is it going to be every better? Well, how do we start every keynote? You guys know? Anybody know? No, we already did those. Come on, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. You were listening. The first thing we do is we thank you. Of course we thank you. We thank all of you. All of you guys are really what made us. That's what we talked about at the main keynote. I hope you got the message. We talked about the trailblazer. Guess who created that whole meme, that whole idea? It's all of you guys in this room. You guys should be really proud of that. Well, yeah, give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a hand because it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, 18 years ago, computer monitors looked like that. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. We have some old pictures of our apartment where we started. And uh, that's me. I, yes, I did have dark hair at one point in time. You guys are giving me some gray hairs. My children are giving me gray hairs. You know, it's been a lot of work. But we started with this vision. And the vision was not to create uh, software. It was a no software uh, idea. The clever ones of you caught me and said, you're writing software, aren't you? It's not no software. I said, yeah, I know that, I know that. But the vision of no software was we wanted to make it simple and we didn't want to have you have to install software to buy computers. You know that story. And the vision was clicks not code. Clicks not code was a phrase we used. In fact, uh, on our website, when we were only a Salesforce automation company, we talked about point, click, close. Anybody remember that? Point, click, close. That was the idea. And we wanted it to be very, very simple. We wanted it to be simple so that trailblazers like you could be successful. Didn't want to have to write code, didn't want to make it hard, wanted to make it super, super simple. Well, you guys, as I, as I just said earlier, made that vision a reality. You took that platform that we created, the simplicity of that platform, and you built amazing apps. Amazing apps. You're delivering business value. You're transforming. Well, this is awesome. Thank you for being here. I didn't even see it. Where did you sneak in? <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> how, how did I say thank you? Thank you. All right. Um, delivering business value and transforming your companies. You guys have become the heroes and the heroines in your companies. It's really incredible. And driving innovation. And at the keynote, you heard it. You guys invented the trailblazer. You guys are the trailblazers. You guys are the innovators. You're the technology di disruptors. And you're the global shapers. That's a term that Mark wanted to have in there. It was super important. It's from the World Economic Forum. You guys are shaping the future of the world. That's a big responsibility. I hope you guys can handle it, because you guys are doing it. And as part of that, you're creating this economy. I'm giving you guys all whiplash. I'm going to make you all turn around. <laughs> this, this is really fun. I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to walk behind you and tap you on the head. I'm going to walk up here. 3.3 million new jobs by 2022. Hopefully I can get out of here. Oh, look, it's all blocked. Come say hi to this guy in the hat. How you doing? Vans, good to see you. All right, 3.3 million new jobs. Two of the top 10 jobs listed are going to be for Salesforce. You know what the number four job is? Salesforce admin, that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> Salesforce admin. That's jobs for all of you, jobs for a bunch of people that are online. If you're online watching this, we love you too. We're sorry you couldn't make it in the room. We want you to be here. And if you're online or in the room and, and you want to learn more, well, how are you going to do it? Of course, you're going to do it with Trailhead. Trailhead started with, for our developer community. How do you like Trailhead? That's good. You know what Trailhead is, learn, you know, you, you take the trails, you get the badges, you get skilled up, you compete with your friends. Do we have any rangers in the room? 
Here are the Rangers. Where were you at the keynote? I, maybe it was too many people at the keynote. I was like, where are the Rangers? And I didn't get enough of a response. You guys were holding out for here, I guess. But I think it's so cool that you guys are Rangers, and that is a lot of work. And if you're not a Ranger, you know, you can go and spend some time taking these courses, taking these trails, getting the badges, and becoming awesome, becoming awesome admins. Hashtag awesome admin. I've heard that before, huh? You like that? Yeah. And you can take it to your company, which we've talked about, which we launched at this uh, conference with my trailhead. You guys like my trailhead? Is that a good idea? Coming, yeah. Coming next spring, you're going to get the power of trailhead in your own hands. And it's what we always do, right? We start with a solution. We start with an app. We start with Sales Cloud, and then Patient Care said, I love it, but let me rename the tabs. Let me create custom fields. And so the platform came out of that. Sarah Franklin, how, give a hand for Sarah Franklin here. Yeah, right there. Sarah, the pioneer, the trailblazer on Trailhead, created Trailhead, and then, and then she said, well, let's unlock it for everyone else. Let's give it to you. And so, you know, we've opened it up, and I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. By the way, I'm sorry. Thank you so much, Apex and Lemons. Let, let's call out Apex and Lemons. You guys were awesome. I never thanked you. And I love the video that you guys do. Well, the, the last video. You do a lot of videos. But I love them all. So my trailhead, giving you the power of trailhead in your own hands, which is incredible, incredibly, incredibly awesome. Now, the other thing that's awesome is giving out awards. You guys like awards? I like awards. I love awards. So, Cheryl Feldman. Cheryl, where are you? Cheryl was our first ever award winner, right? 2014. Let me give you a high five, Cheryl. Come over here. High five there. Way to go. 2014. I was here for Cheryl, okay? And since then, all of these people on this slide have won awards. I'm not going to list them all. I'm not going to name them all. You can read them yourself while we talk up here. Last year, we gave another golden hoodie. Actually, sorry, the first golden hoodie. The first golden hoodie. Sorry. Where's Zach Otero? <laughs> Zach? Zach, there you are. And to prove it, there it is right there, the golden hoodie. Yeah, even more rare than a ranger. Zach? Congrats on that. A few others have been given out since then. But would you guys like to give out another golden hoodie? Yeah? Do you know who it's for? Anybody know who it's for? You might be reading the slides. Let's bring up Rebecca here. Everybody know Rebecca? And Scott Lucart, our new golden award, award winner, golden hoodie. Some sort of meme called hashtag life with Goldie. Anybody know what that is? You guys create all these new things. It's, I love it. All right. Thank you, Rebecca. Looking good. Looking good. Somehow I left my phone up here. So let's do a selfie while we're up here. Oh, yeah. Golden hoodie. Now, Scott, why did we give you this golden hoodie? Well... You are an awesome admin. You're amazing. That's not where you're giving it, we're giving it to you. Because, you know, you heard of the keynote. It's not just about us. It's not just about our customers. It's about everyone else in the world that we need to help. And you did some amazing things at Montrose Place. Amazing things. But tell us what that school is and who it's for and what brought you to it and, and, and what, you know, what energized you to make it, uh, be a change maker yeah, be a, a global shaper uh, in Houston. Yeah, thank you so much. So when Mark asked us to go out and adopt a program, I decided to work with Montrose Grace Place because they focus on LGBT homeless youth in Houston. Yeah. Uh, they're a drop-in clinic uh, to get services. And right now, of the 1.6 million people who are homeless that are youth, 40% of them identify as LGBT. 
Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that we could bring programming to those people. Um, Supporting equality. Yes. One of the key values that we share. Yes. So we created a GoFundMe and it got the community to rally behind it. And we were able to go from a $1,500 goal to $3,800 and got them 10 computers. Wow. And have started... and have started teaching Trailhead once a month in small group settings. So we sit one Salesforce professional down with two people at a time, yeah. and we work through a trail learning how to do Salesforce in a very small, uh, intimate, fun, conversational way. That is awesome. Well, let's hear it for Scott Lucard. Scott, Thank congratulations. You. Give me a hug. Thank you. Good job. So proud of you, Scott. Really proud of you. You know, and one of the, another trail they could probably take is we have an equality trail. You know, and let's talk about equality and, and have them preach the value of equality out to everyone else in, the, in that community. All right. Well, anyway, a, a change maker in the world, Scott Lucart, the newest Golden Hoodie Award, Life with Goldie with Scott. Okay. Now, what do we do next? In every presentation, we're going to talk about three stories, right? Three is the number. Three is the number, and we're going to talk about three stories Three stories about three companies, but it's actually not about three companies. What's most important about these three stories is about three trailblazers, three people. One is Eric Peterson at Tough Shed, who's championing productivity with lightning. Another story is Shauna Hughes at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. Yeah, you're gonna get, just wait, you're gonna hear from her. She's gonna have her chance. She's delivering innovation with Einstein. And to close it out, Bentu Jalaba, with Girl Develop It, talking about building connections with the platform. Three amazing stories. And to bring the first story to life, the first amazing story on Tough Shed, I want to invite up one of my favorite people, Shauna Wolverton. Shauna, take it away. Oh, yeah. All right. Good afternoon, awesome admins. I... I'm Shauna, and uh, I know it's kind of subtle today, but I'm going to talk about lightning. Uh, yeah, big surprise. So I have been uh, working on lightning for about three years, but um, it's my baby. And, and we have been really busy in this office. Really, this year has seen a tremendous amount of new features in lightning. And if ever it was ready, I'm convinced it's now. But I've also been really busy. I have been on the road so much they actually even made me a little concert t-shirt for all the cities me and my team have been to this year spreading the gospel of lightning. But I, uh, I just get to play a rock star up here. The real rock stars are all of you. And I need your help now to bring this message of lightning uh, out into your customers. And we heard about Eric, who's uh, doing that at Tough Shed. And Eric's users are the kind of people, traditionally, who maybe filled out forms in triplicate on a, on a clipboard, right? Not real all-in computer users. So his experience needed to be simple. It needed to be easy to use. And at Tough Shed, they live and die by the data. So those actionable reporting, putting those reports everywhere, were really important. And it's great that uh, you know, we can have this new Lightning desktop, and his users have these great experiences when they're sitting behind their desks, but we know that very often they're out on the floor with customers selling sheds, and so they need an app that comes with them when they're on the go. And like I said, Winter 18 has been epic. A whole host of new features, from custom home pages into all of the new things you can do with mobile. Eric is really bringing that uh, lightning productivity into his org. And rather than having me keep talking about it, Laura, should we show him a demo? Yes. Awesome. Hi, Dreamforce. Hi, awesome admins. Fantastic. We're going to start at the beginning, right? Right on that home page. And in Lightning, this is customizable. We have freed up those dashboards. And not only now are they on the dashboard page, they're here on the home page. And he can make those reports customizable by profile. So all of the different people in his orgs can see just the things that are important to them. And Lightning was built from the ground up with insights. So 
all of that information that's in his org that his users might not have even known about, right? Actionable right on the home page. And even we've given some love to that tasks component. It's not just about what's today. It's about what's coming up and what's overdue. And his users uh, can get right to what's important to them. But we didn't just really do a lot in the homepage. Chatter got a lot of love. Who uses Chatter in their organization? Great. So now we've got Einstein recommendations right in Chatter. So we can help his users see exactly what it is they need to do. And we're using that same intelligence now on the company highlights filter. So his users can get just at the exciting things, the highlights that are in that full company feed. And when you want to have a more curated, more personalized look at what's happening in Chatter, his users now can create these streams, follow groups, records, reports, and different streams for different things that you're concerned about, all point and click, simple for his end users. And it's not just Chatter either. Calendars. You guys have heard me talk a lot about how cool calendars are in Lightning, right? Any record that has a date in a calendar form. This is huge. But we listened, because that's what we do here. We listened, and you told us you needed calendar sharing. So we brought that into Lightning in the winter release. And so now Eric's users can collaborate on their calendars. And of course, not just a week view, Calendars love month view. <laughs> it's great stuff. So in Lightning now as well, we have this great new navigation. And it's not just those tabs anymore. Tabs are intelligent. So we can get right into my recent lists, the ones I use most frequently. No more landing on recently used. And Eric. Eric built this great, uh, this great list for his users, all of the apps, but his users need to make this their own. So another one we did in winter is you can now finally clone those lists inside of Lightning. And once you clone the list, you can customize this and personalize it just for you. So we can go ahead and just show my opportunities, but there's a whole bunch of other features we put on lists that can make this your own. You can resize your columns, and those are sticky. They're going to stay with you. And a great only enlightening feature, you can now wrap the text or clip it. This is a great personalization feature. All of the, uh, you know, a high level look at all that data without having to drill in. But when we clone that list, all of that great stuff came with it, right? Your chart is here, and even your Kanban view comes with you when you clone that list. So now we have this great view, and we know when we come to this list, we always want to see our opportunities in this amazing view, right? Who doesn't love seeing their opportunities in this great chart? So now with favorites, Eric users can favorite this list, and whenever they come back, they can come right back to the Kanban view and all come have easy access from anywhere in the application directly to this list. And speaking of favorites, we're actually going to use favorites. We favorited an opportunity earlier, and we're going to dive right in to the opportunity record. And we have our path, right? That's great. It's still there, this idea of key fields. Now path is available on multiple objects. We have uh, this great thing for me. This is so fun. What a difference an S makes, right? Related list, related lists. So now, because products are so important, he can bring that one related list in directly to his users. And we have that timeline view. It's great. You have this visual look at what's happening on this record. But now his users have a great way to filter this just to get at the information they need. And we know that. Right, We live and die by those uh, reports. So now we can bring uh, the report chart right into the utility bar. That utility bar used to be a thing that was really kind of console apps. But now any app can have a utility bar, and we can bring those great utilities into any app uh, on the Lightning platform. So now that we see this great thing, we can drill into it. And I'm going to show you what I think is one of the most powerful features that's happening in Lightning, and that's the new Lightning Report Builder. I mean, I'm going to show you all of this, but the one you're going to love, really, is that you can run reports without hitting save. Right? But really, what we've done here is we've democratized report building. Our hope here is that we've made it so easy to build a report that 
people can stop asking you all to build reports <laughs> and they can do some of that themselves. They can have access to that actionable insight uh, and those great stuff that the data is in the org just uh, for themselves. So now we have this great report. We have an amazing experience that we've built for Scott's users that are uh, at their desks. But what do we do, Laura, from here? I think we should make it a mobile app. I think we should make it a mobile app. Let's make a mobile app. So you've heard all about the uh, Lightning App Builder. And really, that's a great place not just to customize uh, the Lightning experience, but it's a great place to build custom apps for the phone with clicks instead of code. You can see here, this is where we customized our home and our record pages, but today we're going to have an app page. And we have a great set of templates that you can use as you're looking to build out apps. Uh, but we have the ones out of the box new now. We have custom templates, so you can build templates that can be used across your organization. We're going to use our standard one today. And to me, this is the beauty part of Lightning, right? This is the idea of standard components that we provide out of the box that you can just drag and drop onto this record page. And they are configurable. So one component, one dashboard component, with just simple clicks, with just configuration, can be used across pages, across apps, and across form factors in infinite ways. As many, it's like it's only limited by your imagination what you can do with these components. So Eric's users have a great list view of all of the products. And we don't talk about this enough, the power of flow in mobile. Where are my Flonatics? Flonatics? Yeah. So drag a flow onto a mobile app, and you have great access to those kinds of things your users need to do on the go. And actions are a huge part of the platform on Lightning. This idea of capturing micro moments, of making it really easy and seamless to add the data uh, for your users right on uh, our mobile app. So we can very easily configure those. And now that we have this page, we can go ahead and we can give it a logo. Every good app needs a good logo. And while we're here, we could put this on the desktop if we wanted. There's nothing stopping us. It's responsive. But this is really purpose-built from mobile. So we're just going to add this to the mobile navigation. And now we have our mobile app. But Laura, is there a little more we could do here? Yeah, I think we can make it look more like Tough Shed. I think that is a great idea. So we're going to go ahead and go look at some of the branding options that we have now for the mobile application. So we can really easily add in uh, a color. So this can be Tough Shed Red. And we can bring in the Tough Shed logo so that when the His users are uh, on that floor, that sense that this app is their own. So let's take a look. We had a small problem in demo. Oh, look, it's red. It's amazing. In demos, we had made it the launch so fast that you didn't even see the logo. So <laughs> you can now. That's fantastic. It's red. Tough Shed Red. And we now have a great, productive, activity-driven experience with all of the cool features in Winter 18 on the desktop and on the phone. Uh, Parker? Where's Parker? Right here. Do you want to come up and tell us a little more about what's happening at Tough Shed? I would love to. But I'm not going to come up there. So I have Juan and, and Eric here from Top Shed. If you guys could uh, join me. Uh, all right, let, let's hear it for Juan and Eric, OK? <laughs> Two trailblazers uh, on, on this story. Um, Juan, you're the director of IT at, at Top Shed. And you could have like gone outside the company to find someone to help you. But you found someone inside the company to help you transform Tough Shed. You found Eric. Can you tell us that story of how that came to be? Yeah. Um, so my office and the restroom is between Eric's old cubicle, and I would make many trips. <laughs> and I would always hear this guy talking to customers, trying to help them with our clunky XCRM. Um, and he really had a heart for the customer. He had workarounds and let's try this, let's try that. He was, he was basically fearless and I could hear this through the cubicle walls. Yeah. And uh, he had a great attitude and a heart for the customer. And I said, I need that. And uh, luckily, lucky for us, our, our VP of sales said, yeah, you can have them. Just make sure I don't lose them either. I said, nope, you're gonna benefit too. And so he gave him two jobs, but the same salary. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. 
Got it. The bump yep. came later. Yeah, uh, smart. Yeah, and, and he proved himself. He had a great attitude. So so speaking of salary, we said, hey, there's this new thing. It's Salesforce, and we're going to go live with something called Lightning. Yeah. Uh, we need someone to take the charge, and, and he stepped up, and he did that. And uh, he, he never looked back, so he's, he's our Lightning expert. And uh, he, he doesn't have a tech background, uh, but I knew he would shine because he had a great attitude, and, and he has. Yeah. Uh, we're proud of him. Awesome. Thank you, Juan. Yep. All right, let's hear Eric's story. So... Yeah, it's here. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. You know, because it, it, it takes the people who are going to discover the talent and make it happen. And so we need the people, the change makers like Juan, but we also need the trailblazers like Eric. So, Eric, you're championing productivity with lightning yes. at Tough Shed. Let's t tell your story and teach the audience a, a trick or two. So, I, productivity, I think it, it really starts with training, um, but training yourself. Um, yeah. Trailhead, obviously. Um, the admin, obviously, <laughs> obviously. The uh, the admin podcast. Um, I sort of just really started listening to that probably three or four months ago, um, and now it's just like every single day I've learned so much, and uh, the hosts are really cool. How many of you listen to the admin podcast? <laughs> yeah. All right. Sweet. Um, so, so that's one of your tips: is listening. Yes. Listen to the admin to podcast. Yes. Awesome. Communities. Um, join as many. Join the communities. Yep. Um, so, uh, with the end users, though, uh, um, with our end users, our, our salespeople, um, as Shauna alluded to earlier, they're kind of used to writing things down on a piece of paper in triplicate. Um, basically, sounds efficient. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, make it simple. Uh, make it as, which is easy to do with Lightning. Um, show them how to use it. Show them again and again until basically it's habit. <laughs> Um, so you have to have persistence. Yeah, be yeah. Another tip. So uh, kind of to what Juan was saying, I absolutely love training people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, in our org, there's just about 500 people in it, so it's a little hard to do that. Um, so what we've started to do is uh, create our own sort of internal Salesforce evangelists, uh, regional managers, and... Um, Get them excited about it. Get them excited yeah. about lightning, all the cool things you can do with it, and then they just kind of spread that so you're out. Creating your team. own community in Tough Shed to yeah. evangelize yeah. and expand out. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Eric, thank you so much thank for you. your story. Pleasure to meet you. Juan, thank you. Great story of Tough Shed. Let's hear it for Tough Shed. All right. Story number one. Story number two is an uh, amazing story. Shauna Hughes at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. You can't hear from Shawnee yet. You can't hear from Shawnee yet because we want to bring up Jillian Bruce. Jillian. Welcome, Jillian. Everybody knows you. Thank you, Parker. Hello, awesome admins. All right. I am I'm really pumped to be here today in case you can't tell. And I'm pumped because I get to talk to you about a really cool story. I'm here to talk about the one and only Shauna Hughes. See, I can't keep saying your name because there's just going to be endless applauses. <laughs> but I'm here to talk about her story because she is an innovator. She's an innovator at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. Now, this is a 100-year-old organization that moves incredibly fast. They host thousands of events every year, tours, exhibitions, lectures. So she's had to really innovate a way to help that organization plan all those events, help make sure that everyone who attends those events has an amazing time. And so she's got to build an autom automation, automation, whenever she can, to make that move fast. She does that with lightning. Shauna delivers innovation with lightning at Minneapolis Institute of Art. She's created an incredible custom app in Lightning and used some of the really cool new features with Winter 18, like custom navigation, dynamic pages. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Don't worry about it. And so, and she's got an amazing system that she set up to help automate all those processes using Process Builder. Now, the exciting thing is that she is also going to start delivering this innovation with Einstein. Einstein? <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm really excited. So Einstein Prediction Builder is what she's going to use to help her organization continue to plan these events and move extremely fast. And there's one more thing that I just had to put in this demo. It's not till spring 18. 
but my team will attest that when I was building this out in the demo and viewing it, I literally squilled, so I have to show it to you. It's called My Lightning, and it's custom theming and branding you're going to be able to do in your own Salesforce application without any code. <laughs> right? All right, but enough slides. We want to get into the story, right? Look at this beautiful app. This is the app that Sean has built for her events managers. Now you can see that custom theming and branding I talk about. I promise you're going to get it spring 18. It's going to be amazing. But the first thing you'll notice is that this looks a little different, right? There are no longer the tabs all across the top that you're used to seeing. That's because this is a console app. And this console app now has them in the drop down. Console means you can open up multiple things inside of your Salesforce window at the same time without losing where you work. You can even minimize those tabs at the top to save some space. I don't know about you, but I usually have about 50 browser tabs open at once, right? Not very efficient because I close that and I lose all of those places that I'm working. Well, in console, those tabs are sticky. So when you close that window and reopen it, Salesforce is going to repopulate those tabs for you. Now, another cool thing in console is list views. We now have the ability to have a split view of lists in console. This is really awesome because now you can have your list open in one side of the page and what you're looking at, the record of that list on the other side of the page, right? Another thing that Sean has used with Winter 18, this is a cool new Winter 18 feature, is custom navigation. So if you see, when we open an event attendance record, the event that the attendee is attending opens up at the same time as a sub-tab. Pretty nifty, right? Let's take a closer look at this event page that Sean has customized for her users. So you'll see at the top, we've got this path, right? Now we know path works on standard, standard objects. But Sean has built a custom path on her custom object to help her event managers plan the processes that are required when you're planning an event, right? Now, another cool thing she's done is she's used the Lightning App Builder to customize the page, pulling in a custom component that she got from the App Exchange. It's called an image slider. It's free. And all it does is it pulls those photos that her users are posting in the chatter feed directly to the top of the page. Now, you can put that component anywhere. And she didn't have to build that. That is something she found on the App Exchange. Another thing she's done, yeah, it's awesome, right? So plug and play, right? You don't have to build these from scratch. They're available to you to put into your application. She's also built a custom tab for analytics. Now, this analytics tab, she's put charts that help her users plan events, help them predict how many people are going to attend, Got to make sure there's room for everyone when they show up. Now, these charts are really helpful, but the problem is she's got a lot of event managers, right? And each one guesstimates, based on this chart data, how many people they think they're going to attend. Well, that guess word is kind of a problem. We only want the estimate, right? So this is where Shauna is super excited to bring in the power of Einstein and by using the Einstein Prediction Builder. So the Einstein Prediction Builder is a way that we can create custom predictions. This is how we can, you know, we've been hearing about this fourth industrial revolution all week, right? This is how we get to be leaders in that area, okay? So Einstein Prediction Builder, we're going to create a prediction to help us understand how many people are going to attend each event. Now, we know Einstein works on standard objects, right? Like lead scoring. <laughs> it works on custom objects that you build too. All right? So we're going to select that custom museum event object. And then we're going to tell it which field we want it to predict. We want it to predict attendance, right? Now, the next part is probably my favorite part because <laughs> we get to tell Einstein how to think. My parents are here. They'll tell you. I like to tell people how to think all the time. Doesn't always go so well, but with Einstein, I can do that. So I can select any standard or custom fields for Einstein to look at in order to make that attendance prediction. Tell Einstein where to save that, uh, that predicted attendance to a field on my object. And now we're going to let Einstein do its work. While Einstein does its work, let's go into Process Builder. We're going to check out a process that Shauna has already built to help predict attendance. Now, this is a great process, but it's currently working on event registration. I don't know about you, but I'm really bad at pre-registering for events. 
I mean, I show up to parties at Dreamforce and don't even sign up on the list, right? Who's done that, right? So this is not a really great way for her to predict how many people are going to attend an event until it's too late. This is where we're going to bring in that Einstein prediction. We're going to make that Einstein prediction actionable. We're going to pull in that Einstein prediction that compares that predicted attendance to the room capacity for the event, right? When that's over 100, then we know that we might have a capacity issue. More people are going to show up than we have room for. So we want a few actions to take place. First, we're going to post a chatter for the event, right? So everyone can see that there could be a problem. And then we want to create a record, a task record, assigning it to the event owner so that they know they have to take care of this potential capacity issue. We're going to activate it. And then let's go back into our event and make sure that we have a location already picked out for it. Now, this is called Creative Saturdays. It's a really cool event. It sounds like a learning event. So let's put it in our classroom. We're going to use that action that Sean has built to assign the location to classrooms. And you know what? I have a feeling we're going to see something here. If we scroll down, right, we can see our chatter post letting us know that chatter posts would be there. Be great. Uh, so we're going to see that notification in chatter letting us know that there's going to be a capacity issue, right? Because we have that process builder in place. And we're going to see a task created. Live demos, folks. Sometimes this happens. It's OK. Laura's figuring it out. <laughs> so we'd, we're going to see a task, right? A task record created that's going to let us know that, hey, you know, that museum event owner needs to change maybe the room. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but like I said, remember, you have to scroll down to see that? Scroll, scroll. It's not very apparent to anyone who's viewing that event. We want to make it really clear that anyone who views that event page that something needs to be changed. We need to move it to a bigger room, right? So let's use something really cool called dynamic pages Ooh. to really put this in your face. We're going to use the Lightning App Builder, and we're going to create a rich text component that's going to be a warning. We're going to put that right at the top of the page there, and we're going to you know, make it really fun. Let's let, our, let everybody know that, you know, hey, we might need to update the location of this event. Oh, in unicorn emoji, you can never go wrong, nor can you go wrong with Comic Sans, right? <laughs> What's wrong with Comic Sans? I'm just kidding. So it's hard to ignore, right? So that's going to be a really easy warning to pay attention to. We're going to add that to the page. Now, we don't want that to display on every single event, right? Because not every single event is going to be over capacity. We only want that to display when Einstein is saying that we could have a capacity issue. So we're going to put a filter on this component. This filter will use that field that Einstein is creating for us. And based on that result, it will display the component only when we have a capacity issue. Pretty awesome, right? Pretty awesome. All right. Well, let's go back and let's 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 see this and let's see if this will uh, work for us. And so our process builder might be, need a little work there. All right. So we're going to go back to our Creative Saturdays event page. Ho ho! There's our components. Okay. Good job, demo team. <laughs> well, okay. We obviously have a capacity issue. Let's update the location. Let's move this to a big auditorium. We have a lot of people that want to come to this event. So we're going to move it to maybe our biggest auditorium that we have at the museum. And now what should happen? Does our component disappear? Look at that. So that is how Shauna is using the power of lightning and really excited to use the power of Einstein <laughs> to really deliver innovation at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. Parker, All right. back to you. Let's hear it for Jillian. Great job, Jillian. Okay, I have Shauna here. Okay, Shauna, first we have... Let's hear it for Shauna. Okay, I've got to tell you guys a story. Okay, I'm going to tell the story first. <laughs> so, uh, Dreamforce is not done in a day. That keynote takes a lot of work, and we practice it a lot. And we fly around... Uh, with Mark and the whole demo team and the creative team, and we practiced. So we practiced it in Minneapolis. And it was the top of this building. I don't I forget what the building was. What was the building? Uh, so it was a beautiful hotel and beautiful views. 
And there's probably about 20 customers, partners, MVPs sitting at the table, uh, and Mark. And then I'm sitting at the kid table in the back, you know, with all the other Salesforce employees. And guess who is right next to Mark Benioff? <laughs> Shauna, you sat next to him. That must have yeah, been pretty cool. It was. Yeah. It was. All right. Well, that's not what we're here to talk about. But anyway, I had to tell everyone that story because everyone's so jealous of you right now that you have that opportunity. Uh, and, and you gave Mark direct feedback right next to him. You told him, like, you got to change this, do this, you know, and that was you. You owned it. So that was cool. Um, but let's, let's talk about Einstein. You know, uh, I wouldn't have thought Minneapolis Institute of Art, you know, would be the first to be thinking about Einstein AI. But what excites you about Einstein, especially in the context of, of what you're doing in Minneapolis? Well, <clears throat> Parker, it's nice because it's literally the same data. We have, you know, better business model. And also my end users just don't have to think about it. And I can deliver the same level of AI sophistication as a major organization that has all the money in the world, right? Yeah. Um, and then it's really important for us because we compete with the for-profit entertainment industry. So we need every advantage that we can get. Yeah. And so you took, you, you have a degree in data science and machine learning and natural language intelligence, right, to do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty good. You use the power of Einstein, the power of my Einstein, especially, to bring AI to Minneapolis Institute of Art. Yes, I did. Awesome story. Well, congrats. Uh, we love you. Congrats on all your success. <laughs> all right, let's hear it for Sean. What a great story. Okay, let's move on to our third story, our third incredible story uh, at Girl Develop It, singular. Girl Develop It, Girl Develop It. Okay, I think that's how I'm supposed to say it. With Bentu Jalaba, we're gonna hear from her in a second. But before that, I wanna bring up Leanne Rimel. Leanne, tell us about what's happening at Girl Develop It. Thanks, Parker. And thank you, Trailblazers. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us today. We've learned so much today so far, so much this week. We've seen so much. We've seen awesome applications, things that we can do in Lightning. And I'm here to tell you, stay tuned with me. I'm here to tell you how we can do even more. You can go even further and do more with your skills and build connections on Salesforce. Bintu builds connections at Girl Develop It. If you don't know about Girl Develop It, you should, because Girl Develop It is an amazing nationwide nonprofit that teaches adult women to code all over the country. And they streamline their operations on Salesforce. They have placed over 300 women in leadership positions as volunteer chapter leaders, volunteer instructors. Yes, that's awesome. And they're able to use the Salesforce platform to help give those volunteers what they need to be successful, to deliver impact in their communities all over the country. And they're impacting their communities in a big way. They have taught over 95,000 individual students. That's a big deal. Applaud, applaud, that's a big deal. And Girl Develop It doesn't exist in a silo, just like none of your organizations exist in a silo. There's external systems, there's other places that there's data that they need to enable those volunteers, to enable Girl Develop It headquarters, to deliver this kind of impact everywhere they are. And they can do that on the Salesforce platform. And you know what? So can you. You can build connections on the platform so you can expand what you're doing for your organizations. You can do even more. Who wants new users? You can connect to users outside your organization, like volunteers, like Girl Develop It does, like partners, like customers, all with the community, with the community builder. Because there is an entire assortment of new tools in the community builder that are built for you, admin trailblazers. There's components, app exchange components, community specific components, Branding that you can deliver entirely with clicks, no CSS required. And I'm really excited for how we as admins can do even more with external systems in Winter 18. 
Because in the past, integrations were often big blocks of code, right? They were huge integrations that were written by maybe someone else, maybe we didn't write them. And if we need to make changes to that, because our business needs change, everyone's business is changing really fast, our needs are changing. And we couldn't make changes to those integrations, we couldn't make changes to those connections without accessing that code. And in winter 18, you can now manage everything that you do with a platform event connection with Process Builder. So once you set up that initial connection, which does require code, I want to make sure I'm clear about that. Once you set up that initial listening relationship with an external database, an external system, as your needs change as a business, as an organization, you can manage them entirely in Process Builder. This is a huge deal for those of us who don't want to code all day. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're ready to see a demo. So let's start the demo. And let's see how Bintu can use the platform to deliver connections for Girl Develop It. So we have our Lightning app. This is for our Girl Develop It headquarters. We've seen all the amazing features today in Lightning apps. And this is how Girl Develop It is using Salesforce to track their chapters, track the classes, understand what's going on all over the country. And this is great. This is useful for GDI headquarters. But we want to enable those chapter leaders. We want to enable our community of volunteers. And we're going to do that in the Community Builder. The Community Builder is powered by clicks. You can brand it. You can customize it. You can build this entire page with components. So all those skills you've been working on with the App Builder and working with components, you can bring those to the community here. We've got community-specific components like topics, uh, featured topics, trending topics. We can understand who's active in our community. And this is a great page, but we want to do even more. We want to bring more information from GDI right to this page so we can enable those chapter leaders. And we're going to do that in our components. Now, we've got these awesome standard components that we just saw. but. We're going to bring one in from the App Exchange because in the Community Builder, just like an App Builder, you can connect right to the App Exchange and bring in components that help you extend what you're delivering to your users wherever they are. So GDI wants to bring out video content for their chapter leaders. They want to make sure they're always enabling them with the latest video content, things that are important, and no one wants to get a newsletter. People want to see it in their homepage. So we've brought in a video banner from the App Exchange. We can bring that YouTube. Uh, clip right over. We can choose on the properties. Let's turn autoplay off because we want to make sure we keep them coming back to the community. So no autoplay. So this is great. The home page is great. It's super useful. But how do we connect our chapter leaders to that data that we saw? What classes are popular? What's going on in my chapter? We do that in our custom chapter details page. This is a page you can build entirely with clicks for your community. And you can bring standard and custom objects, all of that data in your org, to your community users right here on this page. And we've done just that. Those report chart components that you know and love, list views, components you're familiar with from working in Salesforce. We also have a component from the App Exchange for Calendar. Let's do even more, though. Let's customize this even further. We want to make this an actionable page. We don't just want to see reports, even though those are great. We also want to see what are the tasks that I have to do next? How do I stay on top of what goes into being a chapter leader? Because there's a lot that goes into leading a chapter. So we want to give them a way to look at their tasks right here on their page. Now, Girl Develop It chapter leaders are spending a lot of time today copying and pasting information from classes. Maybe they have a repeat class, or they're using one of the classes from the GDI core curriculum. And they're copy and pasting that, and they're putting it in an external website, a public website. Let's call it locallearning.com, which is a fictional website for today. But they're putting it into an external website where they can then connect with their community members, with their students. And that's time consuming. We want to decrease clicks for these chapter leaders so that they can get back to teaching and connecting with instructors, having that impact. And brand new in Winter 18, 
we can bring a visual workflow into our community page so that we can enable them to do just that, to publish classes on an external site with their visual workflow. That's awesome. Who here loves Flow? We already saw Flow earlier. So we've brought our Flow component over. We've made this page not only really useful, but really actionable. Now let's take a look at our core Salesforce app and see what happens when a community leader or chapter leader publishes a class. We're publishing a class with Apex, with that visual, that visual workflow to this public site, but we also wanna make sure that we're listening for everything that happens on this external site, right? We wanna make sure whether or not a chapter leader is publishing it via the community, maybe they're publishing it on a mobile app, they're going right to that site to publish it. We wanna make sure that we always know what are the GDI classes that are being scheduled on this public website so that our great app and our community can be up to date. Well, with a little bit of code, we've created a listening connection to that external site, and that's called a platform event. So if this looks familiar to you, admin trailblazers in the room, because it kind of looks like a standard or custom object, if you know how to work with standard or custom objects, you know how to work with platform events, because you can add fields, you can define what are the pieces, what are the values, what's the data that we want to bring in from this external website? What's the information we want to make sure that we collect? We can do that all here. Now, if you love writing Apex, you can definitely define what we do with that data with a trigger. Go for it. You can write Apex code all day and define the integration with a trigger. But if you love Process Builder, <laughs> if you love Process Builder, brand new in Winter 18, you can trigger a process from this listening connection. That's huge. That means that you can kick off a process when something happens on an external site, and you can manage everything with clicks here in Process Builder. So we went ahead, we've been working on our process already, and we'll show it to you now. We've got a process that starts when a class is published to a GDI chapter on this public website. And then we get to define what happens. So of course, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna put that class in Salesforce. We wanna create a record. And one of the things that's really cool about bringing in platform events to Process Builder is those field values that we saw earlier, deciding what's the data we wanna collect from this public website, that's available to you here as well. That data from that connection, those values, the title, the chapter, the description, you can define that all here in your actions on your process. So we're gonna create a record. We're also going to, of course, kick off some automation, some workflow that allows us to manage our classes. And we have a child process that we've already created. And so we're going to invoke that process. So hopefully everyone here is, knows about uh, invocable processes. It's very cool. You can invoke a process from a process. So we've already saved ourselves some work by doing that. Now when we activate this process, what we're doing is we're closing the loop on this connection because we gave our chapter leaders a way to publish classes on a public site with clicks in their community. And then we looked at our listening connection that we created with that public website so that we hear every single class that's published on this community. So we never miss a class, regardless of how it was added to that public website. And then we defined what happens in Salesforce with the process builder process. So I'm ready to take a look at our uh, chapter leader community. Let's go ahead and take a look at our chapter leader community and see what we've developed for our amazing GDI chapter leaders. So when we refresh our homepage, we see all of our featured topics, items that we want to encourage our GDI chapter leaders to connect on, like mentorship, career, new members, a place for them to go. We've got our videos so they can see any latest content that GDI wants to publish for them. We see trending topics. Of course, Salesforce is a trending topic. Yay, we love learning about Salesforce and entering the jobs economy. And we see our active chapter leaders and what they're knowledgeable on. So this is a great place for our chapter leaders to connect with one another, whether they're really experienced chapter leaders or they're new chapter leaders. So we can help them be successful and deliver impact to their communities wherever they are. Now let's take a look at our chapter details page. So we've got our tasks, our events, our flow, our calendar, everything we need to manage our chapter, to ensure that we're able to continue delivering that impact 
to all of those women in our community, enable our instructors, enable our chapter leaders. Now, we've been really inspired this week. We're really ready to learn more Salesforce, and we've got some demand in our San Francisco chapter for another Salesforce class. So let's go ahead and schedule our class in Salesforce East Ohana room. Now, the great thing about this flow is that we're copying over information. So again, we're saving our chapter leader a ton of clicks. We're not copying information from previous records. We're not going to different websites. With just a click, we're publishing this on a public website, locallearning.com. And actually, let's pull in locallearning.com, our external website, and take a look. When we refresh our local learning page, our new class is added there. Yay! And when we refresh our chapter leader homepage, we've got our class added, our calendar's updated, our tasks are updated, and we're enabling those chapter leaders to do more and focus on delivering that impact at their local communities. And that is how Bintu delivers connections at Girl Develop It. Back to you, Parker. All right. Let's hear it for Leanne. Great job, Leanne. Awesome. And welcome, Bintu. Everybody give a big hand at Bintu. Yeah. All right, Bintu, here it is. So what, what inspired you to bring the Salesforce platform to Girl Develop It and transform what, what you do there? Salesforce is an amazing platform. I mean, first of all, what other platform that offers accessibility and affordability to anyone in the community to train? Trailhead is amazing. Thank you, Salesforce. <laughs> Thank you. Someone like me, you know, when I came here, I thought I was the only accidental admin. And then I started talking to everyone. Everyone here is an accidental admin. <laughs> <laughs> so being able to learn at my own pace, being able to take my time to understand was very valuable for me. And another thing that I have to say, and I have to add this because it's important to me as a woman of color and as a woman of African descent. When I opened that trailhead and I saw that the, the um, Salesforce admin was Chinua Toure, I was inspired. <laughs> so that was inspiring. Oh, great story. Salesforce has shown us that they're not just talking diversity, they're talking the talk and walking the walk. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, the reason that it's in, it, it was in, the reason that we're inspired at GDI to um, build these um, tools that help us to streamline our operations is because we want to build community. That's what we're about. We, we empower women through community and technology. Yeah. So it was important to us for us to have those tools so that our, our students and our chapter leaders, so we can interact with them, so we can promote transparency, so we can promote accountability. That's always big for a nonprofit. But even beyond that, let me tell you what is very important that we have Salesforce. When Salesforce is doing my work and doing all the operations, GDI has the opportunity to expand our reach, to reach that next billion, to trailblaze, to be in India, Africa, Nairobi, um, Nigeria, to go there and lift and, and empower those women there so that I'm not like under a whole bunch of spreadsheet because that's how I used to be. 53 chapters, 95,000 members, um, 5,000 classes, and guess what happens? Everyone has 1,000 spreadsheets, so it's 50, 53,000 <laughs> spreadsheets. So once, if we can get away from the spreadsheet and start actually doing the work, for many nonprofits, it's only like two people doing a whole bunch of work. Yeah. So if we have Salesforce doing the work, then we are empowered to go and do the real work at hand to promote our wow. mission. Thank you. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bintu. Yeah, that was amazing. Let's hear it for Bintu. I think we need Bintu on stage somehow next year. That was an amazing story and what a what, well-spoken. All right, Bintu's a trailblazer. She's an awesome admin. Shauna's an awesome admin. She's a trailblazer. Eric, awesome story. We've heard these three stories, and now we're going to bring it to a close. 
Now, there was a lot in there, and I didn't follow every single thing. There were a lot of features in there, and you're like, wait, what about that, and this one, and this one, and I want to learn that. Well, we've packaged it all up for you. All the content you just saw, you can learn very quickly. Just text ADMIN to 64586, and you will get this trail mix. If you forget that, we'll get it to you another way. Don't worry. And this trail mix covers all of the content that you had in the show, and... If you finish the trail, or the trail mix, by December 31st, that's the end of this fiscal year, or the end of this, not fiscal year, end of this calendar year, <laughs> sorry about that, you will get a special badge. You're going to earn a cloudy trailblazer badge. No one else is going to get that. Who wants that? That'd be pretty awesome. Other ways that you can engage, of course, if you're not already in the collaboration group, if you're not already in the admin collaboration group, Join it at trailblazer.salesforce.com. We have 12,000 admins up there. 12,000 more than in this room. You can join them online. Okay, that's another way you can connect. But even better, if you listen to Stephanie Herrera at, uh, at the main keynote talk about Salesforce Saturdays, why not connect in person? Why not go to your local gathering? There are over 200 community-led gatherings. Find your local community, join that community, and connect in person, help each other. And with that, we're closing another day of, of Salesforce Dreamforce. I hope you enjoy the night. Rest well, there's a whole nother day tomorrow, and thank you very much. You know, Salesforce has changed my life. I wrote a blog post about this a few years ago that I was never expecting to go, I guess, viral, but it did. And the blog post is titled, The Best Thing I Built on Salesforce, My Career. And it's true. I was an at-home mom. I thought I was going to be the world's best pediatric surgeon. I went to school for business. I was not in this industry a couple of years ago. I went to school to be a lawyer. I was a cosmetologist and a hairdresser. If you would have asked me 15 years ago, if I would have a career in technology, I would have told you you were crazy. You know, and it's not easy to put yourself out there. I think about what is it that makes you excited and happy and passionate. What is it that I really love? What, why do I like doing this stuff? Maybe your passion is veterans and your passion might be retail. Or if you're in banking, you can really take what you learn in Salesforce and you can apply it to any industry. That was an eye-opener for me. This is a huge universe. I can actually start to dream about what I want to do. The power of the Salesforce platform allows you to do so many things. You can do so much with it. I'm flying with Einstein! Woohoo! The sky is the limit. The limit is your imagination. We're going to bring our customer a level of service that is extraordinary. That's what it's all about. It's all about the customer. I can now talk to case study example after case study example of where, with Salesforce, we've been able to pull this off. That's exciting. That's where it's been life-changing. I never thought I had the ability to do that, and I think Salesforce has not only given me technical skills, it's given me confidence in myself to know that I can achieve these things. Being a trailblazer is coming out first and clearing the path for others. It's being the voice of the customer. You're giving them something that they're looking for. You're always making sure that the best technology is at their fingertips. These tools actually push me to figure out what the best is every day. All of that is not possible without an incredible tool like Trailhead. The best thing about Salesforce and the smartest thing they've ever done is the community. It is phenomenal. The Trailhead community it just takes you wherever you need to go. I somehow found the user group and I went in there and I was actually hoping to pay somebody to help me and all these people helped me for free. I will never ever forget that feeling and I remember that experience and I try to recreate that for other people. It's an amazing example of what an ecosystem can really do when it bands together and focuses on how we can all make each other better. Where you can not only be proud of the work that you're doing, but the people you're doing it with. That's the magic of Salesforce. It's changed my life. It really has, and it's changed my company and the customers that I work with. When your customers are happy, your company's striving, and when your company's striving, you're truly at your best. You're at the top of your game. This is what I was meant to do my whole life. Being your best is not only having a great career, but it's enabling others to have a great career, and I think that makes me my best.